Yeah. When I found out that they were going to tear down the bridge between land and the Cape Arago lighthouse, there was something in me that just, I had to come out here. The bridge needs to be replaced. The cost, about a million dollars. So instead, the Coast Guard will dismantle the bridge. We contacted the Confederated Tribes of Coos, Lower Umpqua, and Sayusla Indians to see if they'd meet us for one last trip to Chief's Island. Well, it's Chief's Island um, because it is, you know, the, one of the places that where the chiefs would come to. And, you know, there are some great stories that go back not only of Chief's Island, but of Women and Children's Island, of what happened here. People that were being uh, forcibly removed and moved up to Yahats to uh, encampment. And uh, of the stories of uh, how the chiefs actually helped uh, hit people on the island, you know, to keep them away from the United States Army. I don't know what it is. The Native Americans say there's something spiritual about this place, and I, I agree. Kathy and I visited the area and stayed in the shadow of this island several times. We'd come here to rest, to make important decisions. We came here right after we found out I had cancer. We came here to escape. Very soon, this island and some surrounding acreage will be transferred back to the tribe by congressional order. You know, the lighthouse that is on the island is the third lighthouse that's been there since 1866. Well, the very first one uh, lasted just a few years, and uh, this lighthouse, I believe, came in in 1930. There are a number of people that are buried out in, in this area. Certainly, tribal members have been buried here for literally 10,000 years. <laughs> oh man, we are at the top of the lighthouse, this is so awesome. I've always had a connection here from a story I did years ago on a whale that was beached out here. I was probably 26 years old. Then when I was in my 30s, I came out here with Gordon Ross, a county commissioner, to do a story on the island. And then when the, the government finally started working to give this land back to the people that it belonged to, I came out here with the tribe and did a story. You know, I think in life there's times when, when endings are actually beginnings and we just don't recognize them that way. And I think this is one of those moments where something is ending but something new can begin. We're coming to the end where we're actually taking out the bridge and, and looking forward to the transfer of this land back to, to tribal hands for the first time since 1855. This didn't happen overnight. This didn't happen uh, it is not the legacy of any one person. It is a legacy of a tribe. It is a legacy of a group of people working together through time to have a part of their homeland return, to have a village site return, to have a culture return that was stolen. Very big deal because of the cultural significance. It's a very big deal because of the emotional significance. From the tribal members' perspective, it would be important to both preserve this place, to preserve its history, and to keep it, you know, as a very, very special and spiritual place, not for economic development, but certainly as a, uh, as a spiritual and a cultural icon for our people. And yeah, maybe I'm over spiritualizing it. I don't know. I don't think so. I think there's something that, that I needed to be here today. Um, I just needed to be here today. That's all. People actually try to get over this thing.